uh, today we're going to be talking about the social design of online games. I guess it could be any games, but or all games, but I think online is the most applicable. Um, so the social design is. Oh wait, do we want this to be squad only? Um. Yes. Yeah, friends oh. only. Um, so, <laughs> oh my god, I, I have such a hard time trying to clip highlights because we, we always start saying something and then stop <laughs> and then go on a tangent for five minutes. I'm like, how do I clip this? So, <laughs> so you just accept it and it's full glory. Uh, I guess so. So the social design of games is basically the philosophy and design that goes into Encouraging players to interact with each other in an online setting or in an online game setting. So it's kind of interesting to look at like MMOs in particular because it's the social design of these games have changed so much in more recent game releases. Right. Well, and uh, you know the the games in the last, you know, essentially since World of Warcraft have been different than, you know, at least MMOs have been different than the ones that came before that. Right. So I guess the best place to start would be to talk about the OG MMOs or the OG online games and how they encouraged people to collaborate with each other, I guess would be a good way to put it. Right. I mean, you know, my own experience with text muds was that, um, it just kind of happened organically, you know, like some people wanted to solo and go farm things on their own. Some people wanted to group together. Almost every mud I can think of had a party system where you could invite people to parties and go fight stuff. Um, the pretty much every game had kind of a a party system, and it, like uh, you know, going back to Bartles for types, he recognized that. Um, one of the motivations was a socializer motivation, people who kind of wanted to chat. Um, part of the difficulty, part of the difficulty with that, though, is, of course, is that, you know, the, the, internet, is, the internet, you know, has plenty of ways to kind of cater to people who just want to chat. You know, Facebook chat or, um, Facebook chat, you know, back in the day we had IM programs, uh, you know, comments on blogs, you know, talking on Twitter. Um, so, like, yeah, it's kind of difficult for a game to really kind of, like, be able to provide uh, a, a unique experience, or an experience that, like, you know, that caters specifically to the, to the social player. Um, basically what you kind of, what generally what you get is you get the type of people who like the game, but also want to be social. And so they'll be, they'll basically be social in the context of the game. And that's kind of what, it, and Bartle talks about this in his paper, like that's generally what you want to focus on then, is, um, ways you can kind of like let players, um, feel like they have, you know, they give players like, you know, the context to, uh, to chat with other people in the game, you know, give, the, you know, like the game is essentially the topic that helps people, uh, socialize. And that, that's, oh, hey, go ahead. Right, oh, yeah, like, you know, oh, hey, did you hear this guild got a world first, or, oh, hey, you know, have you heard about the nerfs coming down the line, or, you know, did you watch the dev stream, um, there's a lot of a lot of kind of subtleties like that that make the you know make a game uh, appealing to a socializer more than just 
uh, it being a, a glorified chat program. Right, and that that does make it somewhat interesting because you think of you 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 mentioned World First, and I remember playing Warcraft, and when when someone gets a World First achievement, like it, it I say like a lot, and I hate myself for it. Um, it spams it across everyone's chat. This person just got world first, you know. Right. Uh, 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 I forget what I was online for for that. I think it was Ice Grand Citadel. Uh, world first Ice Grand Citadel. And it, it just, it tells everybody, just like, hey, 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 here's something to talk about. Here's, here's the thing that right. happened. And, you know, like, you know, a lot of that is catering to the, um, the achiever mindset mm -hmm. uh you know basically like you're giving you know that that's intended to give people recognition for you know master you know having such master of the game they're able to get this thing before anybody else at least on that server and gives the player it kind of encourages like a almost competitive edge be like why don't you try to get the next right um but yeah, but this does give people kind of like something to wag their tongues about, or you know, even if it's something along the lines of, oh well, you know, his guild did this for him, or you know, got carried. It wasn't just, right, it wasn't just one person. It was like you know, I remember like one time there's you know it was like some thing it was like you know first person to hit max level, then new new um, uh, expansion. People were talking about like oh it was a. Uh, is a uh, group of people basically that all you know like five people kind of like passed off playing the character so they were able to complete on play so the characters online continuously for you know the however much time it was you know That's... essentially like you know a normal person would have had to stay up for three days straight but you know because they because there's a number of people playing the same character Oh, and Dajara says the game gives shared neutral context like sports talk in an office. Right, exactly, exactly. It it, it basically gives you that kind of like common ground for people to talk about. Because obviously people are going to be interested in it. You know, if they sign up for the game, then people are going to be interested in that. And, you know, even if the socializers and the person, you know, doing the hardcore raids or, you know, having, you know, a billion alts all up to, you know, impossible high level... You know, you can assume that they are, they have some interest in the game. You know, whether it's on a gameplay level or a lore level or whatnot. I mean, I've run into this a bit, and when I, you know, I played Final Fantasy, where people love the Final Fantasy lore, and so uh, a lot of you know a lot of what they did, you know, a lot of times, like you know, just kind of sitting and chatting with someone about lore. I mean, like, Mitternock and I did that a lot of times, just kind of sat around talking about the lore and the mm -hmm. implications of it. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it gives you that context. And that's why, you know, that's that's why the game is, you know, potentially more interesting than just a, you know, Facebook chat or whatnot. Right. And, uh, so... It's interesting, though, how the social aspects of MMOs in particular have changed over time. Where before, before World of Warcraft, let, let's just use that as our threshold. You'd, in order to get like a group for a piece of content. Um, Mm -hmm. You'd have to, you know, basically spam whatever chat channel that allowed it to find people to run that content. Or, or you know, people would join guilds with the express mm -hmm. interest of, you know, these people are going to be the type of people that will want to run the type of content I want to run. Whether it's raiding or dungeons or, you know, just sitting around and leveling up and shooting the shit. Like, you know, a lot of times, you know, the, the guilds were a very fundamental, I mean, I, I think they still are a very fundamental part of um, the, the uh, MMO experience. I've delivered another um, capsule. Because it basically gives people, you know, people who have kind of like-minded goals a chance to kind of, you know, get together. 
can be readily available. And you know, and you know, like uh, I, I think that the 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 nature of guilds have shifted. That's kind of an interesting uh, social design issue because. Um, you know, in early in early games, you know, EverQuest and Ultima Online and whatnot, like it was really kind of brutally hard for you to do anything in the world. Mm -hmm. um, in Ultima Online, because you'd get killed, and World of, uh, in uh, EverQuest One, because it was just a tough game. You know, it was kind of intended to require you to uh, group. Um, this is kind of one of the biggest departures it had from um, text mods, where the text mods generally. You know, you were able to solo it to some extent, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but now, now guilds have become a lot more of a... Um, Life support on the way. System, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, gameplay system, or like even... I, I, mean, I don't know if this is the right word, but like optional. Where, like, you know, you... you like, in EverQuest 1, you were really kind of hindering yourself if you didn't find a guild to join. Um, it depends game to game but i i'd say in some games it's been made a re requirement for certain things Another that well, may I, I, not necessarily be co running content but to have like in modern world of warcraft you have to be in a go to get certain heirloom pieces for example right right well i mean like and i think like world of warcraft uh want to say it was one that, you know, maybe not the first but it was a definitely an early game they start adding gameplay aspects to social groups like guilds mm -hmm. um where you uh um ba you know, basically where you could level up a guild and you got bonuses for being in the guild i would say that star wars galaxies was one of the first games to so it, it indirectly have that because um, you'd have uh, your guild cities could up, would right. level up and then that would determine what was available for the city. Right. And th but that required oh. contributions from the guild that ran it. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it kind of blurred the lines there, but like I would say, you know. Kind of in my estimation, I would say that was more of a feature of the uh, the cities, you know, that happened. You know, they were basically kind of focused around guilds, not too surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, rather than it being kind of a guild feature, uh, specifically. Because the cities were kind of intended to, to help fill out the planets. Right. Um... um. But yeah, like you know, and so like the World of Warcraft and a lot of other games are kind of like they basically put more gameplay uh, encouragement at least to for people to join a, a guild. Whereas you know, in in EverQuest, like you know, the number of people who didn't want to join a guild was pretty small. Um, and like the I, I, like one of the reasons why this is kind of important is uh I know a lot of people kind of get a little touchy about this subject about wanting to you know, be be free to solo as much as they want. Uh, from a developer point of view, the reason why this matters is because you want um you know people get kind of bound to a game by the social fabric. Um, you know I play. Final Fantasy XIV for a long time because of the people I know, you know, like Mitternacht, you know, when I played, uh, I had, you know, I'd made a bunch of, you know, pretty good friends in the game as well, um, and so, you know, it kind of, it was, it, it, the friend, the friendship kind of kept me in the game, mm -hmm. uh, and even like World of Warcraft to some extent, because I played with a bunch of people I knew offline, uh, it just, you know, it's, at certain points it kind of got to the point where I was like, well, I'm not... I'm not so interested in the game anymore. I'm gonna take a break, but you know, I came back because my friends were playing. My friends were interested in doing it. So, right. And the the when I quit WoW well, before I played it again more recently, um, I quit because my guild, the raiding guild I was in, kind of fell apart over some drama, and right. I couldn't find another guild that I meshed with as well. Even right, though I, right. even though I left it to to stay with the friends I was really close with, like 
none of us. I keep saying like, geez, <laughs> I need to fix myself. <laughs> need to reprogram my brain. Um, we weren't able to find a guild that would facilitate us all to be able to do raids together. Because right, right. the guilds that we went to would be like, oh yeah, we need this person and this person, but we don't need the third person. And right, just be like, right. well, then, you know. No, we're we'll, we'll kind of a package deal. Yeah. yeah. And, I, like, yeah, like, a lot of times, this, that's the hard part of, like, a lot of social design, is that a lot of what goes on is completely beyond the control of the designer. Um, or or, or it, it's, 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 it's like a second or third order effect. Mm-hmm. They can only set down the foundation f to facilitate for what becomes right. the social play. Right, right. And so, like, in that sort of, you know, in that kind of... I mean, I think there's... Like, designers can do a lot more things to, to encourage social play. But I think in particular... Um, uh, like, you know, like World of Warcraft's rating in particular was very interesting where it... Um, it was limited by a, a strict upper bounds, uh, an idea that kind of allowed it to, um, that kind of allowed it to uh, them to balance, you know, balance the encounters better. Mm -hmm. um, the like, you know, because in, in original EverQuest, you know, where there was hardly any instancing, um, you know, raids were kind of out in the open, and people would go and kill things, and you could bring as many people as you wanted to. Um, Right, like world boss hunting type stuff. Yeah, kind of. I mean, essentially, yeah, like, you know, basically all raids and, and original requests were, were world bosses. Um, and so, like, a bit, like, you know, as, you know, the. Yeah, you know, so World of Warcraft, like, having limits on the number of people that can go on a raid was potentially good for gameplay because they can basically tweak and tune the gameplay better. Mm hmm. Um, but on the flip side, it also created a situation where, like, what you, what you just said, like, you know, a, a raiding guild might have no use for the third person in a, in a group of three people. Um, they might not want to, you know, put up with what they consider dead weight, you know, in order to get these two people that they, you know, that they really want. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in, in the original request, like, sure, come along with, you know, behind the scenes, it's probably like, you're not, you know, you're not going to get the, <laughs> you're not going to get the, the prime goodies. Thanks for watching. We do the podcast every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Come hang out with us there.